Okay, so now you're ready to fill in your sources table. Now, you're more than welcome to do it like the, like the Pat says, where you fill in all this information as plain text. I suggest um, I actually teach you how to do it properly now. Um, you're going to do that um, at a later stage. I think it's in term three, where you learn how to do it as a proper source, where we actually use this tool in Word called citations and bibliography. Now, you're going to have to do this for phase three anyway, so I think it'll save us time if we do it like this from the start. So first off, very important, change the style to Harvard. If you leave it at APA, you won't have all the fields that you require. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to add new sources. So I'm going to say manage sources and click on new. Now the type of source you need to choose here. Most of it I suppose will probably be either a website or a document from a website. I'll tell you the difference now. So if you actually did find a real magazine article um, you'll use probably a book section um, rather than a book because I doubt you'll find a whole book on something. Um, if you have something that you're really not sure, I think like a video will probably be an electronic source um, or a performance, a film could it maybe be. Just have a look what's available here, but an electronic source usually has quite a lot that you can use. Um, a performance also, but electronic source has quite a few. What you're going to do is you fill in the fields over here. But website has the author, the web page, year, and the year, month, and day that you accessed it when you gained access to the source, as well as the URL. The difference between a document from a website and a website is the document from a website also has the year, the month, and the day of the specific article. So um, a website only has a year whereas a document from a website has the month and the day of the article as well. So typically this will be a website that is like an organization about say let's say kids staying safe against cyberbullying whereas a document from a website will be an article on a news site that has a specific day on which it was written. Okay so now what you're going to do is you use your sources that you have open at the moment and you're going to fill this information in. Let's start with the author. So sometimes you have an author that's clear at the top of the article. Um, now this is clearly not a person. This is a corporate author as they would call it. Over here let's see here they didn't actually list an author at the top of the article. So here I will say the Garden Central is also the corporate author. And over here they do have a specific author, John Egan. All right. So the tip that I have for you here is if you don't have an author that is clearly specified, you use the company and the logo is usually at the top. And you can also identify it at the start of the URL, the Garden Central. Do you see the Garden Central? BHG, BHG. So that's the company that you then use as the author. All right, so that's the one you would fill in at the top here. So if, you, it's, if it's an actual person, you fill it in here. And if it's a corporate author, you tick this box and you fill it in here. So let's do one of each. I'm going to use this one and unfortunately unfortunately, there's nothing I can copy here so I'm going to have to fill this in. All right. Name of the web page. Now this is the article name. So it's usually the title that's nice and big at the top, like this. Six allergens you should be aware of. I'm now obviously using gardening, which will be nothing like yours. Um, this will be follow these ten steps. The one you can, the thing that you can use to help you identify the name of the web page, it's usually the title of the tab 
in the so it's usually similar at least to the title of the tab of the page six allergens you see nine tips for staying safe that's usually like it's quite similar and it's often similar to the last bit of the URL as well that's how you can identify the name of the web page all right now the year let's see if we can find a year on this page oh that's easy there's actually a full date now if I have a full date February 21st 2018 I'm going to change this to a document from a website and I'm going to fill this full one in now at the bottom here you'll see they give you an example of what it should be filled in like so then you can see they say you should put in the full month all right now year month and day accessed is when you did your research and when you actually found the source this is extremely important because uh, you'll be surprised how many sources online sometimes they change the source and they actually update the article and other times the article is removed so this is like your safety to say listen when I looked at it that is what it said so this is the this is the way that you can say when I looked at it that's what it said and it's important to specify this because sources online change or they are removed okay URL you have to copy the full URL at the top and paste it in there okay there's my first source and you'll see it actually goes up and sits here under the current list and the master list the master list is the list for this computer the current list is the list in this document okay let's add another source so this one has an actual um, author I want to see if I can find one that doesn't have a oh, this also has a date full date let's see if this one doesn't have a date okay great yes I can't find a date at the top here so if I can't find a date at the top I usually go and look a bit lower especially oh here it says actually page last updated if you can't find something at the bottom like this always go and look right at the bottom sometimes there's a copyright notice of when it was when the page is copyrighted you can then use that date as the date for the website if you still can't find a date have a look sometimes in the URL there's a date let me just show you here um, let's find one see here they actually have a date this was in May 2014 so sometimes the date is in the URL and then other times you see this one actually shows the date in front here as well while you search for it so just keep a look out for those things as well to help you find the date but it's very rare that you won't be able to find the copyright date of a page either so but whenever you have the full date just list it as the document from a website because then you have all the detail you need all right so John Egan and when there's more than one author let me just show you you're actually supposed to use this button because um, they you're actually supposed to use the first and the last names separate because you'll see um, okay this one was clever it picked it up itself you'll see when there's more than one author they list it in a very specific manner all right name of web page nine tips for staying safe in the garden so copy and paste is your best friend over here control C and control V hey 2016 April 25 I think that's going to be faster just typing it And you can just press tab to jump between these fields oh 2016 is actually quite old but I'm doing gardening so that doesn't really matter and I'll show you what you're going to write as the motivation for why you're using an older source
Okay, so there's absolutely no reason why you would ever use or ever leave the year, month and day accessed empty because that's the year, month and day that you accessed it. The URL you'll never leave empty. And the year, month and day, or at least the year of the website, if you have, if you only can find that, you have to at least ask your teacher to see if, if they can help you find it because really usually you can find it at least in the copyright at the bottom. Just carry on looking. And usually if you can't find it, see if you can't find a better source because most good sources at least have that information. And remember to tick corporate author if you can't find a person's name. Okay, so if you've got this um, sources loaded now, so the best way I suggest actually putting it in here then is using a tool on your computer called a snipping tool. So go and open it up. Ah, can't find it there. It's a Windows accessory. Snipping tool. Okay. And open up your manage sources. Click one of these and say edit. Now what you're going to do is you're going to basically take a screenshot, a small bit of a screenshot of this screen. Make sure the mode is rectangular. Click on new and you'll see the screen goes white and then you can just cut off a little piece of this to prove that you've filled everything in. So personally I don't I don't cut everything that I can see everything I filled in. It's just a little bit to show the teacher that you filled in everything you need. So I basically just cut off from about there, just like that, to show that everything is filled in. Okay. So it's not necessary to be able to see everything because they can go and look it up. It is saved in the document now. Okay. And I didn't even save anything. It's just in my memory. It's literally on the clipboard now. And then I can paste it now, paste it as a picture. And there it's pasted as a picture. So that's my proof of the source. And then the next one I'll do exactly the same way. Edit, snipping tool, new. So I don't go all the way up there. I use it from about the G so that I can get this full section over there. And I cut it just enough to show that I've filled everything in. I don't have to save anything here, I just carry on on the Word document, say OK, close, and then I go and paste it as a picture. OK, and it's going over, so I'm just going to put a little page break in here, so that each source is on its own page, otherwise it's going to look a bit funny. OK, and then I'm going to fill this in in the next step. So you do that for all three sources, okay? Please make sure that all three of your sources have to be in your current list. You can't, I know some people have actually in the past said cancel after they've done the snipping tool, um, before the, for the first time saying okay. It's very important to click on okay because otherwise it's not saved in the current list, okay? <laughs>